Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it, and let them declare and set it forth before me, who has announced from of old the things to come. Let them tell us what is yet to be, do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God beside me? There is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs. 
heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to reveal, be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the re revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed seeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good wheat seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you will uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. 
but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them in is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. How do you understand the difference between strategy and tactics? Those of you who have served in the military will certainly know the difference. Strategy is a long-term plan or vision of what you hope to accomplish. Tactics are the short-term actions or steps that you take in order to reach your goal. Strategy leads to winning a war. Tactics are a way of winning a battle. Both are important parts of a planning process, and each must be undertaken in their proper order. The parable in today's Gospel reading involves both strategy and tactics. It is said in chapter 13 of Matthew's Gospel that it contains several parables about the coming of God's kingdom. Like the reading which we heard last week, this parable, often called the parable of the wheat and the tares, also involves the planting of seeds and the gathering of crops. It's no surprise that Jesus used agricultural imagery in so many of his parables. His audience were people who lived close to the earth and understood the rhythms of planting and harvesting. As in all of his parables, Jesus used concrete physical phenomena to explain abstract spiritual reality. He used the example of a field sown with both wheat and darnel, which is an a noxious weed that resembles wheat when it's fully mature. He uses that to illustrate how the kingdom of God grows and is brought to fruition. The landowner in the parable has a strategic plan for his crops, which includes the tactic of letting the darnel and the wheat grow together. His servant, however, has a different tactics. He wants to pull the darnel out right away. Why risk letting the wheat be choked out by the weed? When the disciples ask about the meaning of the parable, Jesus identifies the spiritual meaning of the various elements. The field is the word, sorry, the field is the world. The seeds of wheat are the children of the kingdom. The seeds of weed are the children of the evil one. The sower of wheat is the son of man, Jesus' favorite title for himself. The sower of the darnel is the devil, and the harvest is the final judgment at the end of time. The only figure in the parable whom Jesus does not explain is the servant of the landowner. Who or what does he represent? He could be the voice of tradition or the voice of reason. Pulling weeds is a time-honored task for gardeners. It makes sense to get rid of any unwanted growth that could threaten the development of flowers or crops. I wonder how the concerned servant reacted to the tactic of the landowner. He, did he accept uncritically the plan of his master? 
Or did he privately express doubts about letting the weeds grow unfettered? Perhaps he secretly kept an eye on the field, plucking out weeds that seemed to choke out the wheat as it started to develop. This parable focuses on a problem concerning our understanding of the kingdom and how it emerges in the world. It raises the question of God's tolerance of evil. Why does God let sinfulness be such a significant part of human experience? Why doesn't God smote sinners as God seems to have done throughout the Hebrew scriptures, defeating the enemies of the Israelites so that they could inherit the land promised to them? One answer is to affirm that God is a mystery, that the ways of God are not always understandable to human beings. But that still leaves us with the question of how we should deal with evil and evildoers. Do we simply ignore both evil and evildoers? Do we condemn the sin but forgive the sinner? Does forgiveness depend on the sinner's repentance and willingness to change? These are hard questions that have a particular relevance to what's happening in the world today. Let's be clear about the specifics of our present dilemma. While personal sin and the evil which it engenders is always with us, the evils which we are dealing with now are transpersonal. Racism, economic inequality, sexism, misogyny, police violence, gun violence, asserting personal rights even when they threaten the lives of others, and ignoring climate change have become embedded into the very fabric of our society. These are evils which we can no longer ignore. The future of our country, and indeed the whole of creation, is at stake. We need to address these issues in an intentional, committed manner. The way forward will depend on our ability to tell our own stories, to listen to the stories of others, to respect our differences, and to find common ground for developing a more just and equitable society with a common good is upheld as the highest value. The parable of the wheat and the tares reveals at least two things about God. God is both tolerant and patient. God will allow evil to grow, but not forever. The growth of God's kingdom is not a straight line, but rather a cyclical movement which doubles back on itself in a spiral, which continually is called to address the problem of systemic evil. Each time it comes to a familiar evil, there is the potential for going deeper, considering anew how to eliminate various forms of societal sin. We've come to a point in our growth as a nation where there is an alignment of issues, some of which have challenged and bedeviled us for over 400 years. This is our time to re-examine our ethos and our identity as a nation. As Christians, we are in a unique position to deal with these issues because we have the example of Jesus who overcame evil by doing good. He appeared in the world as the human face of God, inviting all who would listen to follow him and his example. He cured the sick, fed the hungry, welcomed sinners, and urged everyone to have faith in him and in his heavenly Father. Following his return to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to empower his followers to embody God's love in every age. And while we confess the priority love as the ultimate Christian value, we often undervalue its power. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King once said, we must discover the power of love, the redemptive power of love. And when we do that, we will make of this old world a new world, for love is the only way. And echoing this sentiment, our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, said, 
in his sermon at the royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, when love is the way, then no child will go to bed hungry in this world ever again. When love is the way, we will let justice roll down like a mighty stream and righteousness like an ever-flowing brook. When love is the way, poverty will become history. When love is the way, the earth will be a sanctuary. When love is the way, we will lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside to study war no more. This may seem like hyperbole or an unattainable dream. It is, in fact, God's dream, which can come to fruition if everyone adopted love as the way, the only way of life. We don't have to solve the problem of evil. God will do that in God's own time. God is the one who establishes the strategy for the coming of the kingdom. It is our task to develop tactics for witnessing to God's reign by being God's loving, compassionate presence in a wounded world which can only be healed through the grace of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop Greg, and for all the clergy and people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, our governor, members of Congress, for the leaders of the nations, for first responders and members of the armed forces, and for all in authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city of Lakewood, for every city and community, and for those who live in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, 
for all who continue to suffer in the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and for those who face violence and persecution. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have asked for our prayers, Kathy, Doris, Aaron, Annette, Mary, Terry, Eric, Linda, Bill, Jean, Ada, Anne, Jean, Barb, and Joanne. Also for Leslie, Jenny, Renee. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, for medical workers who sacrifice and take risks to care for others in the face of the pandemic, for children who continue to face a life of uncertainty due to closures, for all who have lost their jobs due to the virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, for victims of religious persecution, and for victims of racism and racist violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, for all the departed and all who mourn, we pray especially for the repose of the soul of Bothell Police Officer Jonathan Shoup, who was killed in the line of duty Monday morning. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of all the saints, and commending ourselves, one another, and all our lives to Christ our God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you.
Happy birthday, Lee. Happy birthday. What decade are you in? Uh, the eighth, actually. The, no, you're not. Yeah, no, I'm 74 next week. Wow, next all week. right. Well, congratulations. Um, what are you gonna do to celebrate your birthday? Twice a year, at my request, Lolita bakes a pecan pie. Thanksgiving for a fr friend and my birthday. And I married her for her pecan pie. I want that recipe. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Does she share? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll be getting that, I'll be posting that. Okay. okay, do you have any great advice? Yes, as soon as the influenza vaccine is available, get it this year. As soon as the COVID vaccine is available, get it. Don't listen to the anti-vaxxers. And finally, don't assume you have immunity until at least one month after the vaccination. It takes a minimum of three plus weeks to develop adequate antibody response. Thank you. That is good advice. Listen to him. All right, well, you have a happy birthday week. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Hey there, birthday person. Would you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Bob Leroy, the spousal volunteer unit to Pat Leroy, your parish administrator. And how old are you this year? I'll be 73. And tell me about your favorite birthday. My favorite birthday is going to be my next birthday. <laughs> okay, great. Because I want to have something to look forward to. Great. And rumor has it you're a sweets kind of guy. What are you going to have for dessert on your birthday? Probably anything with chocolate and without vegetables. Okay. We'll make that happen. Happy birthday. Thank you. Let's pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Mary's. I am Marian Stinson, and I am the priest in charge. And on behalf of the people and staff of St. Mary's, I thank you for your ongoing financial support of the parish. As you know, our buildings may be closed in the midst of this pandemic, but our hearts are open and the work of the church continues. During the week of July 20th to 25th, we are offering two classes via Zoom a Bible study at 10 a.m. on Tuesday morning and a class on mysticism on Friday at 10 a.m. The contemplative prayer group is taking a short hiatus this week. In addition, we have a book group that, we, that will meet on August 31st at 10 a.m. We are currently reading The Second Mountain by David Brooks. Feel free to pick it up or download it and join us on that day. Information about our classes is available on the St. Mary's website, which is stmaryslw.org. Meanwhile, if you need anything, don't hesitate to call us or stop by on Wednesdays between noon and 1 for what I am calling conversation and blessing. Take care, and we will see you soon. God bless. Amen. A number of years ago, I read Transitions by William Bridges. It's an excellent book for times of change, which we are certainly experiencing. In the decade that's passed, I remember one line from that book, and that's that you must do your endings before you can do your new beginnings. In the time I've known St. Mary's, I've seen you grow and stretch and find your own voice. Now, as you move deeper into the search for a new rector, it's time for you and for me to do our endings.
especially in this time of pandemic, things have radically shifted and changed and we're all trying to find a new way. Now it's time for me to go. My work here is done. I was called to be part of the transition and this is part of it. So I'm here to say that as of August 15th, I will no longer be your assistant pastor. You will always be in my heart. I thank you for your love, for the wonderful ordination that you participated in last year, one of the highlights of my life, as I stepped into a new way of being and you were there with me. I know that God is with you and with me as we go on our separate paths. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you always.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise him, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Holy things for holy people.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>